What did Neil Armstrong do after accidentally tripping Buzz Aldrin on the surface of the moon? He apologized. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Stemulus. I'm Steph Evs, and today we're doing another Topic Talk. Since we just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about five of the non-Apollo missions you may or may not have heard about. I figured it would only be appropriate to kick this list off with the first spacecraft to reach the lunar surface, Luna 2. Launched in September of 1959, Luna 2 was the sixth in a series of spacecrafts launched by the Soviet Union. On its way to the moon, it released bright orange sodium gas to help the observers back on Earth track it. Luna 2 carried instrumentation to detect magnetic fields and radiation, with its main mission being to determine the electron spectrum of the Van Allen radiation belt. Two and a half days after launching, Luna 2 went radio silent, indicating that it had slammed into the surface of the moon at a speed of around 7,400 miles per hour, making it the first human-made object to make contact with another celestial body. Next, we're talking about the Hyten spacecraft. Hyten was built by the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science in Japan and launched four days before I was born on January 24, 1990. Its main objectives involved orbit control and determination, including a lunar swing-by and the first ever aerobraking experiment of a deep space probe using the Earth's atmosphere. While performing its first lunar swing-by, Hyten dropped off the Hagoromo orbiter, which unfortunately returned no data. After completing nine lunar swing-bys and two aerobraking maneuvers, the Hyten spacecraft ended its main mission, and in April of 1993, the spacecraft used the last of its fuel to crash into the lunar surface. The third mission we're talking about today is Chandrayaan-1, the first Indian deep space mission. The Indian Space Research Organization launched Chandrayaan, which means mooncraft in ancient Sanskrit, in October 2008 on a PSLV rocket. Its main scientific goals included the study of the chemical, mineralogical, and photogeologic mapping of the moon. But what Chandrayaan-1 is most known for is that the data it collected aided in the discovery of water ice on the moon. The moon impact probe, which Chandrayaan-1 deployed, detected the signature of water right before it impacted the surface, and this discovery was confirmed by several other missions. If all goes well after I film this, the Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft will have launched at 2.43 a.m. Pacific time this morning, July 22nd. Fingers crossed it goes! Next up is NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO. Launched in June of 2009, the LRO's main exploration mission was focused on supporting the goal of extending humanity into the solar system by identifying the potential future sites of interest that may have high scientific value or terrain and environments that would be suitable for human or robotic missions on the lunar surface. The thing the LRO is most well known for is the topographic map generated by its Lunar Orbiter Laser Altimeter, or LOLA, instrument. To date, this is the most accurate and detailed map of the moon, covering more than 98% of the lunar surface and the plan is to continue to update it as more data comes in. The LRO has also found several places on the lunar surface that may have water ice on them, and in 2013, NASA performed a technology demonstration using one-way laser communication to beam an image of the Mona Lisa to the LRO. Laser communications are a huge deal, particularly for deep space missions as they can pump out more information faster than the radio waves that we traditionally use for these communications. The LRO is still operational and doing science today, and the plan is to keep it in operation for at least another seven years so that it can help identify potential landing sites for the lunar missions happening in the next decade. The last mission I'll be discussing today is China's Chengu 4, which became the first mission to successfully perform a soft landing on the far side of the moon when it touched down in January of this year. After landing, the Chenggu 4 lander deployed the U-22 rover, which is exploring the Von Karman crater in the hopes that it will reveal some information about the moon's interior and its history. In May, it was announced that the rover may have discovered material from the moon's mantle, which was one of the main scientific goals. The basin that Chenggu 4 landed in is thought to have been created by a massive collision with another object, creating spots on the surface where the moon's mantle is essentially exposed. The Von Karman crater was formed after the basin and was later filled in, but the nearby Finsen crater may have sent some of the mantle material flying into the Von Karman crater during a time when the surface of the moon was still volcanic. While the Chang'e 4 mission was only designed to last three lunar days, or around three months, the mission is still operational today, with the probe switching into dormant mode during the lunar nights since there's not enough sunlight to power the spacecraft. So that brings us to our question of the day. These missions are just a few of the many that have visited the moon, and there are many more planned. What is your favorite moon 
Apollo-Soyuz mission, past, present, or future, that isn't an Apollo mission? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to learn more about the missions I've discussed today, or any of the ones I didn't talk about, I'll include the links to all of my sources in the description down below, along with links to all of my social media and my Patreon page, so feel free to check that out in your free time. If you're new here and you find my terrible jokes and total geeky not tolerable, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on any of my future content. I'm always looking for suggestions for future episodes of Topic Talks, so if you've got a STEM-related topic you want to know more about, submit it in the comment section down below or on any of my social media pages using the hashtag Topic Talk, and it just might make it into an episode. But with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time. <laughs>